hi everyone just type a y in the text chat if you can hear me christine linda yeah okay awesome well welcome to today's webinar on the truth about jesus and who he was really so i thought i would do this one because i mean we've all heard about jesus and what he's done and gotten an idea from religion but the trouble is the way they teach it is a bunch of shit like of him being this just wimpy guy who kind of let people walk all over him when in fact it was the complete opposite so i thought i would share on this today so anyway how's everyone feeling today linda's feeling good calm that's great linda <clears throat> christine fairly balanced thanks william awesome christine glad to hear that Okay, so now without further ado, let's jump into the webinar. So Jesus Christ, so who is he really? So let's look at some interesting trivia about Jesus. So he turned water into alcohol at a, at a wedding party. He made food magically appear to feed 5,000 people. He publicly disowned his family when they tried to pull him into line and accused him of being an extremist. So Jesus did these things that people don't even know about. He publicly humiliated spiritual leaders who taught nonsense to their people and also who financially ripped them off, especially those who manipulated money from poor and widows, even name shaming them, e.g. he called them hypocrites and snakes. So Jesus was vicious and he was a warrior. He told people life's answers were inside of them, not the outside e.g. in a church or a great prophet so because the art that's what people get wrong the answers are not in a church building in a congregation and it's not with a prophet it's not with mentors or anything like that the answers are inside of you and you can have mentors and people to guide you but ultimately it's up to you to find that within yourself because you don't, you, the last thing you want to be doing is relying on someone or something outside yourself. And he became invisible and disappeared when people went to kill him. And he hated banks so much, he physically whipped a bunch of bankers who were ripping off people with extortionate charges. So the, the bankers who are extorting people, he literally whipped them with a physical whip. He didn't pay taxes, and when he did, he miraculously got the money, and he manifested it out of thin air. He could heal any sickness, disease, or emotional issues, stopping people from living their purpose and causing them pain. And he loved to do it in unusual ways to test people. E.g., he would spit on, he spat on mud, and it healed a man's eye instantly when he put the mud on his eye. So, who was he really? Now, he wasn't a wimpy, douchebag-looking guy who let people walk all over him like religion suggests that he is. Like, oh yeah, he's all love, all light, and he, he was this great man, da-da-da. Well, no, I mean, it, he was very compassionate and a very kind man, but he was not a fucking wimp. He was a complete badass, and he hung out with a normal man or woman, and he was a complete nightmare to the elite and establishment and privileged people of his day. And he had full control over his life and hologram and what went on around him. His life was pretty much like a sci-fi movie. And many of his miracles were done to improve the quality of people's lives, not convert them to a weird religion or prove that he was someone special. So he didn't do it out of ego. And so people would look at him as this great, this great man. He did it because it was right and it, because it would help people. He was results and action based, not words. He wasn't just a false prophet. He was a brilliant sorcerer and magician, or like a brill brilliant with like things you would see that in the sci-fi movies. He lived financially abundant without needing to work his ass off and work to the bone. And even Donald Trump on steroids can't even come close to Jesus. So just a bit of humor here. So even Trump on steroids doesn't come close to what Jesus was like. And he makes Liam Neeson in the movie Taken look completely ordinary. And Neo from the Matrix look completely beatable. He would shit all over these guys. So 
the type of why or an end in the text chat if you didn't know a lot of those things about Jesus or if you did if you do know. Christine, yes, I do. Yep. And Linda, no. Don't know much. Yeah, and I mean that's pretty common. I mean, most people don't know much about Jesus at all. They've just heard his name from religions and think, oh, religion. Oh, it's just a bunch of shit. And the truth is it is, because what the what the way religion teaches on him is fucking full of shit. But I mean, uh, G, but I mean, uh, believe me when I say that with Jesus, he was a complete badass and he was not a fucking wimp like these churches teach. And I mean, uh, even when you read the Bible, the Bible also like talks about what he did with these things. So why is this relevant to you? Well, without a spiritual purpose and connection in your life, you'll never experience real wealth and prosperity. So Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, acclaimed as one of the greatest wealth creation books ever written. And he admitted that of the 20 super rich men he interviewed, all but one of them died or went insane. Now, why? Because money had become their God and they stopped serving a higher spiritual purpose in humanity. So they were self-serving and they were not serving beyond themselves. And Charles Dickens and Scrooge, his most famous novel, a man found purpose in his life once it became about other people and not just about him. And Anthony Robbins as well in, per in Personal Power shows how all successful men and women have meditation or prayer rituals. So all the successful people of the world have some kind of meditation or prayer rituals and know the importance of spirituality and that, con that connection. Because I'm sure you'd all agree that one of the biggest problems with the world and one of the reasons the dark have been able to take control is the breakdown of that community and just and separating everyone and having them live in just in completely independent lives and like never really like seeing each other, that kind of thing. Like it, there's been a big disconnect with that because we do need our independent independence at our own space, but we also need that tight knit community where everyone is keeping each other accountable and where we keep that connection and, it may, and maintain it because it is high maintenance, but it's very much worth it. And Stephen Covey even said in seven habits of a highly effective person shows how people without spiritual meaning can have all the money yet they'll be miserable and empty. So that's why there's so many people who have made a, a lot of money, but they're very miserable and empty because they don't have meaning and that they've got nothing besides their money. And the spiritual connection and purpose is critical for true wealth i.e. financially, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. Because wealth goes beyond just having all the, all the money. It, you also need to have wealth emotionally, spiritually, and in all the other areas of your life as well. Now, the trouble is many people turn to religion as a crutch. And we are not advocating religion. He just never told us to do this. In fact, he specifically told people not to seek outside themselves, but that the kingdom of heaven, i.e. life's answers and connection with God, was inside of them, in their heart. Because we all have the answers inside our hearts. And the worst thing that we can do is to seek outside ourselves and idolize some, like someone or a church. But Jesus never encouraged you to go to church. In fact, as you'll see shortly, quite the opposite. And in fact, he was very nasty to churches and took great joy in humiliating the leaders who ripped people off and were full of ego and pride with no real spiritual power. Because type of why in the text chat, if some of the most judgmental people and dogmatic people you've met are people who go to church every Sunday. Because I certainly can say that one. Some of the most judgmental people and full of ego and very self-righteous are people I've met who go to church every Sunday. Christine, absolutely. Linda, yeah, very judgmental. Well, ex well and very much so. I mean, if you if you don't agree with them and if you don't believe in God and all, then then they sit there and they'll basically persecute you and act like you're the sport of Satan. 
and they, yeah, if they, and they talk about accepting and love, but as soon as someone doesn't agree with them, then you're, you're then you're persecuted. So Jesus was so Jesus was never a big fan of churches. So now let's look at some exciting stories about what Jesus did. So newsflash: Jesus goes psycho and whips bankers. So as we mentioned, he whipped the bankers physically. And in his days, the establishment was as bad as today. The bankers were extremely corrupt and they ripped people off with high interest and extortionate loans to line their pockets. And all they cared about was filling their pockets. This, they did this by creating a fictitious money system instead of using true money to force people to rely on their system. Does that sound familiar? Taxes were also very high, like today. Lots of people were in financial hardship due to high taxes. And these corrupt bankers who were greedy scumbags who stripped people bare for their own personal gain. So they basically were destroyed people's lives just so they could fill their pockets with a few more dollars. But Jesus saw what was going on and he'd had enough. He took a stand for it. So Jesus turned up to the bank with a scowl, the cat of nine tails, and literally whipped them out of their own building. So the cat of nine tails is what he used. And now the next one is Jesus embarrasses egotistical religious leaders. There were plenty of churches back in Jesus's days, and they were feeding the public with false teachings and things that were full of shit. And everyone feared the religious leaders because if you got kicked out of church, you lost your community standing. So this meant you were not allowed to be involved in business. You lost your welfare. Your family would disown you. You couldn't even go to a new church as they were all in cohorts with each other. So these days, if you get kicked out of a church, you can find a new one. But in these days, you couldn't because they were all linked as one. And they had the most insane rules. Like, and, and absurd. like on the Sabbath day, you couldn't perform miracles, eat certain foods, drink certain drinks, and basically had to stay home and do fuck all. And one day, Jesus deliberately walked into a church on the Sabbath day and healed someone in front of the religious leaders. So he did it just to piss them off. And then when they challenged him, he proceeded to call the leaders a bunch of hypocrites and vipers and basically completely humiliated them in front of their congregations. And not surprisingly, the people loved him, but the church leaders feared him and hated him. And Jesus did money miracles as well. Just like today, people were struggling financially in Jesus's time, but he did miracles to help them out. A prophet called Elijah, who worked closely with Jesus, made a huge debt mag magically disappear to stop a woman becoming a slave. Because in those days, you became a slave if you could not pay. And he took five bread loaves and two fishes and magically multiplied them to feed 5,000 people. And he made Peter's tax debt miraculously disappear, one of his disciples. He miraculously turned water into a quality alcohol at a wedding party. Now, how cool would that be? Getting some water and turning it into wine or like some kind of alcohol. And Jesus did healing miracles. And Jesus had particular compassion on the sick. So while he was a complete badass, he was also very compassionate and very kind. And there were many people who were sick, broken and needing help, just like today. Many had eczema, leprosy, and didn't have the medical help or support which we have available today. So he did many, many miracles. And as an example, one day Jesus was walking in a building and saw a man lying on his mat. The man couldn't walk due to his legs being damaged. And Jesus told him, get off the mat and walk and pulled him up. The man did, and as he did it, his legs became strong and he walked again as normal. And Jesus also caused blind men to open their eyes, caused deaf ears to hear again, healed eczema, fixed up fl flus and fevers like they were nothing. Now, how did he do these miracles? It was very simple. 
He's a new his mission and calling from youth and stayed fully committed to his path and purpose. And he knew the authority and power he was walking in, in that he was the son of God and he had authority over the dark spirits and masters and he lived it. So he wasn't full of ego because he was the son of God. He knew that he knew that because he was the son of God, he had that, that power and authority and he, and he lived it. Very importantly, Jesus learned the laws of healing. And history shows that he trained in India from age 12 to 30 at one stage under many great yogis to perform miracles. And he was taught the natural and spiritual laws around health, how to live by faith and trust his powers. And he learned telekinesis and psychokinesis and how to teleport and become invisible and how to do psychic readings on people and read their thoughts and read into that. And, uh, and learning from Jesus, it's also helped me to apply this into my life, to help me to read people where they're at and to do healings and clearings on them. And he learned how to manipulate energy and consciousness. And even more amazingly, he said we could do everything he could and could, could go way beyond him. So, wow, how cool is that? So he, he said himself that we can not only do what he did, but we can do even more extraordinary things than him. And he encouraged us to do so. And in Mark 11, verse 23 to 24, it says, For verily I say unto you, that what the whosoever shall say unto the mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and that ye shall have them. So scriptures like these are a massive key if you want to manifest things in your life, things like that partner you want, or that amount of money that you're looking for, that career, that purpose. So this is the great thing of it. If you have, if you have that faith and you have no doubt in your heart whatsoever, then you shall have it. And, uh, and when you're doing it for the right reasons, God will, will very much want to bless you and Jesus. Jesus also hung out with rejects and outcasts of society. And the church also doesn't get this either. But Jesus actually hung out with people who are considered rejects of society and the people no one liked and even went to their house for dinner. He hung up with strippers, went to brothels and strip clubs. And he hung up with people with mental health problems and helped to heal them. He also fed people who were in need miraculously. He took care of the homeless and poor. He hung up with the normal everyday person and was mean and nasty to the elite and establishment of his day. So that's the, so this was the other brilliant thing about Jesus. Because the trouble is, as we would all agree, people don't look at the heart, unfortunately. They look at the outside. They don't look at what's inside. Because you can easily have someone who is very good-hearted, but because of they've been through shit or whatever, then they act out and they just act on the outside. So that's when, like, Jesus can help them to, like, find that healing and to come back to who they really are. And he transformed all these different people's lives through his powerful teachings and miracles. Imagine if you did this. You know your life purpose and spiritual mission today. So type a Y in the text chat if you know your life purpose and your spiritual mission at this moment in time. Christine Partley. yes so when not when it comes to your purpose so some it doesn't always happen overnight it's simply a matter of clearing the blocks and unlocking it allowing yourself to unlock it linda kind of no need more exploration and tuning into my higher self yes and that's sometimes that's what you need to to do self-exploration and tune into yourself because the trouble with most people is that they're so focused on the outside world. They're so focused on what's going on in the world, what's going on in their own silly little lives and what's going on with like other people and their family and friends that they don't even look in, inside themselves. 
because as soon as soon as we move out of our energy and we are not in our own space then then it's it, then we disconnect from ourselves and then in turn disconnect from god and from christ and that's not what we want because that also disconnects you from your purpose so the more you explore yourself and go inside the more it will naturally happen because it will naturally kind of go like i mean i remember years ago i did not know what my purpose was i was and i was i was trying to find it but i was i was unsure but as soon as i as soon as i did the healing work and went inside myself more and got and, and also got the and got help from like um my father and other people that i know i needed then it very much got me that's what got me onto my purpose and it helped me to discover my purpose naturally so really by doing that inner work and by doing that regular energy work going into yourself you'll naturally find it and my because my experience is very few people do so they're either struggling financially making good money but they're miserable unhappy or in poor health super wealthy but suffering depression and unless you you unless you're living your life purpose and calling and knowing how to connect with higher realms and manifest money and health miraculously when you need to you'll always be vulnerable to life's challenges and constantly be living in a sense of uncertainty as to what is coming up next jesus by contrast lived in total command he even predicted and knew when he was going to die and he also knew that judas would betray him imagine that level of power and certainty so think about it if jesus can do that so can you um, unless you have power over your life and know how to connect with christ and higher masters you will always be vulnerable to life sorrows sufferings and financial disaster now th now this brings the question do we need churches because this is a question people have been wondering for a long time the idea of churches raises interesting questions such as is it necessary to go to church to learn the truth about jesus and who he really is is religion your answer for manifesting a financial or healing miracle into your life can you connect with higher masters in christ if you attend a church Do churches serve a purpose today the answers to before is all no unless they're a very rare and unique church which know what they're teaching it's not a good idea to go to church because as we've been mentioning jesus himself hated churches he even said that you wouldn't find god without answers outside yourself but from within and the kingdom of god cometh not with what you see on the outward nor shall they say it is here or it is there for behold the kingdom of god is within you so it's within you and it's up to you to find it to do that work because it's not an easy road and you do need to work for it but it's very much worth it in the long run because some people say, uh, wonder what the most expensive thing is on the planet whether it's the lambo or like that big mansion or buying every property it's none of those things the most expensive thing in life is ultimately is freedom because with freedom there's always going to be the dark trying to take it from you and always try to draw you away from god and it's your job it's your duty to fight it uh, to, to fight and to stand for what's right and not be afraid to stand by god and have that faith and churches were originally intended to be an ascension center to connect people to god direct so churches actually originally were great well some of the great greatest places on the planet but sadly this is not what they do anymore they moved away so does the bible jesus encourage people to be prosperous now is the bible relevant to your growth and prosperity happiness and abundance or is it a silly book which only fools believe in and designed only to control you the trouble is that i mean uh, type a y in the text chat if you've um, if you've fallen into that where you've believed that the bible was just a bunch of hokey pokey so i know that i fell into that at one point
So type a Y in the text chat if you've fallen into that before, where you thought that the Bible was just a bunch of hokey pokey. Linda, yes. Yeah, so I mean, and Christine, I didn't understand it. Yeah, and that's the other thing too. If people don't think it's just a bunch of shit, they also won't, they wouldn't understand it. Because the trouble is when you read it from a logical perspective, then it does not make, it won't make any sense to you. Then it will look like a stupid book. Because the trouble is any Bible uh, after 1975 has been tampered with to remove the powerful passages. Hence why we use the King James Bible, because although it is not perfect, it's the closest to the original Holy Bible. Because that's the problem. The modern day Bibles are completely false and corrupted. And, and really what it does is that it, it only takes 5% of arsenic mixed in water to kill someone. Same with false teaching. But let's look at examples where the Bible expressly encourages you to be prosperous and rich. Because the Bible very much encourages you to be, to be wealthy, to have money, and be very rich. For example, have faith in God. Have the faith of God. So, I mean, so very much so. The, it very much encourages people to be prosperous. So, um, the tax miracle in Matthew 17, verse 24 to 27. Food miracle, John 6, verse 1 to 14. So you, can, you can even look at these scriptures later if you're led to. Promise of wealth in Proverbs 1, Psalm 128, Deuteronomy 6, and Genesis 12. And trust brings wealth. Proverbs 3, Deuteronomy 28. And there's also warnings about wealth in Matthew 19, verse 20 to 24, and Luke 12, verse 13 to 21. Because these also warn about when you, um, when you make a lot of money, that you don't allow the money to control you and that you don't, that you don't make money your God. Because in, in the 20 to 24 Matthew one, it talks, it, it, it talks about um, it's easier for a camel to walk through the eye of the needle than it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And it's not taking a shot at rich people. It's not insulting them. It's simply saying that if you're not, if you have made money for the wrong reasons, then it will not, it will be impossible for you to enter the kingdom of heaven. Because these are the people who have built so much wealth and they have so much materialism that they can't let go. And if they were called to let go of all their money and their possessions, they couldn't do it. And Jesus did that. To The rich man asked him, what do I need to do to follow you? And when Jesus told him to give up all his possessions and all, great sorrow befell him. So he can see what's in the heart. Um, it also says in Luke 12, 13, verse 21, that if you, if you've made money solely for yourself, for personal gain, then you are not rich in the eyes of the Lord. And you're not, you're not truly wealthy because it, you're in the end, you're just empty and you've made, you've, you've accumulated great money and wealth for the wrong reasons. Okay. So does anyone have any questions or comments before we do a clearing? Linda, all good? Yep. Okay, so now what we'll do is do the clearing now. So everyone just focus on the code and inhale the code into your chakras and your aura and just imagine it there and close your eyes and start taking deep breaths, relaxing your mind. Mm. 
We now call upon the divine protection and the bright white pyramid surrounding me and each person here. And we call upon the five archangels, Uriel, Gabriel, Raphael, Michael, and Metatron. And we call in Christ as well and Mother Mary, so only those who are aligned with the Word of God and the Christ Consciousness. And we clear and repel any false spirit guides, negative energies, outside interferences, or anything else related now. It is commanded by the laws of the golden liquid realms and our chemical powers that this clearing code be used to clear any blockages, imprints or self-sabotages from each person here, stopping them from being able to receive and connect and that connection from Christ and from connecting with him. We clear any other dark energies or negative ones or witchcraft as well that's going on. And cut and sever any draining energy cords, etheric cords, or compassionate connections as well. And clear around their mind and their heart. So clear any gunk going in there, any hardness of heart, and negative thoughts, voices, doubts in their minds. And really draw each person here closer to Christ. And to draw them closer to God now, to Asia in Tanoi. And we also activate the Christ consciousness within each person here. And activate them into their purpose and who they are. And clear any traumas or occupants or ids or emotional charges going on and bring back their golden soul fragments. We now pour in the golden liquid light, send in the love from the Father and the higher councils and from Christ. So Christ, lay your hand on them and fill them with your love and your strength. And bring each person back into balance here. Bring them peace of mind, body and spirit. And re-energize them and really bring in their vital force energy.
you clear any other t tension or tightness from each person here too? Okay, so how's everyone feeling after that clearing? Linda's feeling calm. Yep, that's great, Linda. Yeah, it was cal it was calming towards the end there too. Catherine, thank you. Feeling more balanced. Excellent, Catherine. That's I'm glad you're feeling like that. Christine felt a few emotions come up. Yeah, that's great, Christine. That's great that a few emotions came up to release. Okay, so now everyone just take a glass of water just to integrate the clearing. Okay, so any final questions or comments before we end for today? Christine, no questions. Great session. Yeah, I agree, Christine. That was that was a great one. I, I certainly enjoyed that one. I trust everyone else did. Linda, thank you for sharing the knowledge about Jesus. Yeah, no worries. The world certainly needs it right now. Okay, yep. So no further questions or anything. Well, thanks everyone. Another great session, great clearing and, and, and more knowledge. And make sure you drink plenty of water and get a good rest tonight. And I'll see you all next week. Bye for now.